Uh, thank you very much. Uh, these are my disclosures. Um, so the ideal bearing surface and total hip replacement still remains somewhat a topic of debate. And it's very much a function of the wear properties, the anticipated survivorship, as well as the surgical ease of use, and perhaps in some countries around the world, especially in the Asian region, the, the actual cost comes into it as well. Um, and despite improvements in our polyethylenes, as uh, Barat described this morning, uh, and the obvious downsides to ceramic, which we're all aware about, such as fracture and squeaking, um, for me, ceramic on ceramic still does have a role in my practice, and I think very much like we've heard this morning about stem selection, I think you need to make an active decision of the type of bearing that you're going to choose according to the patient's expectations and what you believe is best for the patient in their situation. So why do I still use ceramic on ceramic? Um, the biggest attraction for me is its low wear properties. There's no doubt that in simulator studies and in vivo, it has the lowest wear of any of the articulations. It's also extremely smooth and hydrophilic, and so in, under ideal conditions, you get fluid film lubrication, or at least the very least, a mixed lubrication, and so you have a very low friction articulation. It's also extremely hard and scratch resistant, so it's hard to be damaged by any third body particles of bone or cement and hopefully this leads to longer uh, uh, resistance to scratching. And ceramic is very inert, so theoretically, and, and it has been published, that ceramic wear particles are much less inducive of osteolysis and the granuloma, granulomatous reaction than polyethylene particles. And because you get fluid film lubrication, the wear is, you don't get adhesive wear. And so wear of a ceramic articulation should be immune to the, uh, the head size because you're not getting adhesive wear and it's not affected by the sliding distance. And certainly most registries are showing that uh, larger heads in ceramic articulations probably do slightly better than smaller heads. And there are now midterm studies, uh, 12 to 15 years case series, as well as registries, showing that ceramic on ceramic does perform pretty well um, and so is a valid option, I think, in the right situation. So who do I use it in? As I say, I don't use it in everyone, and I certainly am perhaps using it a bit less as our uh, polyethylenes or our confidence in the polyethylenes improve, but I think it does have a role in my young active patients who I believe will outlive the polyethylene. Um, it's not so much the longer lifespan, but more the greater or the greater activity level. And I think more important is that, yeah, that their activity level determines how often they're going to cycle that articulation. It just so happens that the two happen to go probably together because younger patients are more active, so you need both factors. Uh, and particularly for me, the situation where I'm nervous about using poly is when we're doing a um, hip replacement for non-osteoarthritic indications. And often I see this in dysplasia or inflammatory arthritis, particularly in young females where their acetabulum will be quite small. And you're often putting in a 46 or 48 cup. For me, that's quite small. And if you have a young patient and use a poly insert, with a 32 millimetre head or even a 28 head, your poly ends up being quite thin. So it's in these situations that I'll often go for ceramic. There are some comparative studies showing in young patients that ceramic performs as well as and has a lower wear rate than polyethylene and perhaps is a good option in our young active patients. So I think there's enough evidence that it is relatively safe. But of course we know the downsides um, and why don't I use it in everyone because of the potential risks of early failure. So if you are going to use it, there are some certain keys uh, to try to avoid some of these complications. And my first piece of advice is use Delta Ceramic. I think it does make a difference. It's a composite of both uh, alumina and zirconia. And the key is that these um, zirconia particles are capable of dissipating any crack injury and stopping any cracks that occur. So your fracture risk, although not zero, is significantly reduced if you used uh, a, a ceramic composite rather than pure alumina. 
And the other, the other aspect, which is certainly very much around our control, is that ceramics are much more sensitive to positioning as well as surgical handling, and this is where our responsibility takes uh, precedence. Um, because ceramic liners are hard and not, and they're really intolerant of any shell deformation. And so if you're going for a very hard press fit, you run the risk of causing a piece antro-posterior squeeze of the cup, and then you will have trouble putting your ceramic liner in. Because you'll then you'll hang your liner, it'll get two-point fixation antro-posteriorly, which leaves it vulnerable to toggling superior and inferior, and this increases the stresses in your liner and increases, increases your risk of fracturing. So I like to ream by maximum one mil under, and I like the trial, which is one mil smaller than my real prosthesis, to really go in by hand or with minimal impaction. And to achieve this, you've got to know your prosthesis well. And what I mean by this is you've got to know the size of your reamers, the size of your trials, but also the true size of your cup. Keeping in mind that for certain designs, certain companies, a 48 cup need not necessarily truly be 48 at the periphery. In addition, before you engage the liner, make sure that it is symmetrically, uh, before you impact your liner, make sure that it is symmetrically engaged. Um, one particular trap is that with these thinner shells that we're seeing now to accommodate large head sizes, it's very easy if you're going to use screws to have a prominent screw head. So make sure that it's uh, recessed by being coaxial to the, to the um, screw hole, otherwise you will damage the line as you impact it. In addition, you want to get a circumferential view of the cup to make sure that the liner is symmetrically engaged before you impact it. And you do have to impact it with impactor and a mallet because if you just push it in by hand, the wettability of the ceramic creates a vacuum behind the cup and this can lead to a, a, a disen, uh, disengagement then re-engagement asymmetrically if you don't actually fully impact the taper. And what can, can happen is you have this sort of situation where the liner isn't engaged inferiorly, and this can lead to toggling stresses and put the liner at increased risk of fracturing. Finally, of course, you have to get the alignment right, and this doesn't just mean cup alignment, it means combined alignment of your stem and cup. I like to use the Radawat test where I assess my cup head orientation at 45 degrees of flexion and neutral rotation, and you want to make sure that you don't get impingement of your femoral neck on the edge of the ceramic. So for me, ceramic on ceramic still has a place in my young active patients because I think it's the lowest wear articulation, and I do worry that in some of these patients the poly's not going to last long enough. But you have to be meticulous with their technique because it is unforgiving. Use delta ceramic, I think the fracture rate's lower. Understand your prosthesis so that you can put it in meticulously without complications. Thank you very much.